The Calgary Police Service is seeking the public's assistance related to the theft of a number of war medals and other property from a home in Northwest Calgary. On Tuesday, July 21st, between the hours of 2.45 p.m. and 4.30 p.m., an unknown offender or offenders gained entry into a home located in the 400 block of Hart Hawkford Way Northwest. A number of items were taken from the home, including jewelry, watches, and silverware. Also taken were a number of World War II medals. Please continue to investigate this incident. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Calgary Police Service at 403-266-1234 or Crime Stoppers anonymously. I would like to now invite Mr. Pat Hartigan to provide some more information with respect to the war medals. Good morning. Uh, just in context, uh, it's important for our family to try to see whether there's any chance of any kind of recovery of these precious metals to the family. A few weeks ago, our home was broken into and some cherished items were stolen. One of the items taken were my dad's World War II medals. Uh, Dad, Dan Hardigan of Calgary since 1962, was a soldier with the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion and uh, jumped into uh, France the night before D-Day. He was uh, fighting along with his comrades, eventually injured, and sent back to England where he recovered and eventually jumped with the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion again, crossing into Germany. And he fought till the end of the war. Dad and all the soldiers of the Canadian Armed Forces accept the risks of defending or going to war to protect the freedoms and borders of this country, this great Canada of ours. <clears throat> the, medals, the medals he proudly wore and pictured here have ribbons above the medallions that designate the countries and theaters of the war that he served in. It's important that you can realize that these are important to the soldier. Uh, you can also Google the World War II medals uh, and just see where Canadian World War II medals and what their meanings are. I ask all Canadians, our neighbors and our friends and our Calgarian family to please report any information or tips regarding these medals. Thank you. Did your dad talk about his experiences a lot? Dad was one of the uh, veterans that could talk to our family. Um, it, he was a great guy for trying to not embellish the war. In fact, uh, he tried to teach us that war is hell and it's all encompassing and it, in fact, never ends. It affects the families back home and so on. But yeah, he did speak about the experiences and in fact, he realized that the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion just went in and did the job during World War II. Uh, he became a, a member of the association after the war and uh, worked very hard as a historian uh, for the uh, battalion throughout the years. There's been a few really good historians and he was one of them. Eventually correlated a lot of information from the veterans and, uh, and so we were privy to uh, some of these uh, stories that were going on. Do you mind if I ask when he died? Yes, in, uh, in 2001, late 2001, so about 13 years ago, and my mother just passed away in November of 2014, and we inherited that picture frame that you see here where the medals were stolen from. And so they pried the medals right out of the frame, as opposed to... Can you believe that? Um, very carefully, I might add, and I have to say that um, some care was taken to remove the medals, albeit... Uh, you know, misguided, obviously. The person, I don't think they realized the mistake they made. Uh, with regards to taking you know, somebody's medals, they um, basically, uh, you know, uh, defame and desecrate the value of the medal that they stole because it doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the soldier and the veterans of this country. Are you able to speak to which of the medals were for? Well, uh, again, um, uh, I'm not as knowledgeable about uh, the military side of things. I think there's better experts that could do that, or Googling, uh, and that's where I got a lot of my information where, where it was from. The medals themselves are, uh, like I said, theater medals, uh, what, whether he fought in Europe, uh, what countries in Europe, France and Germany. Um, he was a soldier, like any other good soldier. Uh, he wasn't a special soldier. He did his job. 
So can you tell us how many medals were taken again? Yeah, there was five in a string, and then there was a sixth one that was depicted, depicted in the picture uh, that's missing. And I believe that might have been a commemorative medal uh, that was issued to the uh, veterans in the 90s. Yeah, the, uh, I, will, I will defer most of the answer to that to the, uh, to the Calgary Police Service, but uh, as far as they tell me, they're valueless. Uh, they have a lot of value intrinsically to the families and uh, to uh, all Canadians that respect uh, what soldiers do. Can you do it from the microphone? So with respect to the, um, the sale of these or why a person would actually take them, it's, the motivation truly isn't known. Um, do they have value in the community? I would say to some value, but they're more valuable to the family, especially for those meaningful memories and such about their loved ones and such who have, have earned them. Um, could they show up on eBay or Kijiji or something along those lines? Absolutely. Um, but for the most part, they're really truly valueless to in, in, within the sale piece of it. Are there any, any, any identifiable markings on the medals that would signify that they're his or are they just sort of... Uh, uh, no, I would say that uh, not like that. Uh, you do, I think the ribbons are probably as important as the medallions themselves as far as identifying uh, the theater. And, um, and the pictures that we have of it could, uh, I, I doubt that they're even in the same string anymore. So it might be um, hard to identify. Pat, what would you say to whoever did this, if they happen to be hearing you uh, today? It, uh, I was afraid of that question. <laughs> Not really. Uh, what I thought about was uh, what my dad would say. And uh, he always felt that people are, deserve a second chance. And I think this person made a mistake, and they deserve a second chance to try and re make it right, return the medals. And we, the family would appreciate it. Anything else? You touched on this a little bit, but is there a specific story that really sticks out in your mind of your father's wartime day, you know, any close calls, things like that? Well, Dad uh, w is kind of um, an interesting uh, character because he came off a uh, Nova Scotian farm near Antigonish when he was just a young boy and he joined the uh, and volunteered for the Canadian Army and got into the parachute battalion. Um, he dropped in uh, on, into Normandy and landed off the uh, landing zone in the, uh, the, the village that they thought that they were actually going to uh, take the command center from. And the battalion actually did take all of the command uh, uh, you know, requirements and objectives. Uh, he was part of that uh, later in the morning uh, around 6.30 or so once he got back to the landing zone. Uh, he had to back, go back now to, the, uh, to where the fortress was where they were going to take the uh, chateau. And uh, sadly the uh, major and uh, three other people were already killed. Uh, the Canadian forces, uh, parachutes and all of the parachute battalions and, and across the Americans and British uh, and Canadian were dropped and scattered and yet they achieved uh, their objectives uh, completely, even with a diminished force. Uh, he had a small two-inch mortar and he used it uh, on that morning. I don't know if that made a difference, but in the end, uh, with the Canadians that were there um, and supported afterwards, they, they not only took the chateau, but they went on to work about another 10 or 11 days straight, no sleep, and uh, uh, they, uh, they did their job. So uh, they were relieved later in the day and so on, and then they just kept on moving on to the next fight. Uh, those are the kind of things that uh, he doesn't want to talk about or wouldn't say it directly, and with, uh, but he would think of them in pride. Um, he also, his buddy was also uh, Balfour Swim, and uh, he was my uh, uncle because my dad married his sister after the war. So that's, uh, the two of them were pretty interesting characters to hang around when I was a kid. How was your dad injured? Uh, he, and, he and about six guys were relieving uh, some Canadian troops that were being decimated in the forest and uh, they moved out into the field and were being uh, mortared and strafed and so on at that point. 
but they had their red berets on, and I think that the enemy kind of thought that uh, there was new, new uh, troops coming in, and um, he took some shrapnel. Uh, it was pretty minor, uh, major could have been, but uh, minor, and he was he was recovered and and went on to fight again. I might like to say, and he would like to add that. Uh, these were just being, these were just young men. Um, they were all the same. They were all brave. A lot of them didn't come back. And uh, I think this is what uh, we need to remember is uh, the actions they took so long ago protect this country even today. What would it mean for you to see the return of the medals? A great deal. I can't uh, elaborate. It's just, I think you can get my, my feelings that it's quite important to, uh, to uh, have this. Uh, occur if possible. And uh, I, have to, I have to say also there seems to be some good recovery in the world uh, through the internet and through police services and people's in good intentions that uh, medals do return. It might take 30 or 40 years or it might be next week. We don't know.